So up everyone, welcome to the Power of Play with CJ. I just want to focus in on whether or not negotiations for his long-term contract, um, you know, the ongoing, whether it depends upon who you ask, are affecting uh, Anze Kopitas' play this season for the Los Angeles Kings. Obviously, um, his last three games, he's, he's done okay. He's got four points in those games. Um, two of them were losses, but that's neither here nor there. Um, looked really good against Carolina. I thought it was an embarrassing loss for the team. And I thought it was pretty good the other night against uh, against the uh, the Panthers down in South Florida. Um, but, you know, even like his last, I'm just kind of looking at his game logs. In the faceoff dot, where he's usually pretty damn good, you know, perennial Selkie uh, finalist, 39% against the, the Panthers, 48% uh, against Carolina, 38% against uh, Detroit, and 25% against Philly. That's embarrassing. I mean, for a guy that you rely upon to take those big faceoffs to do all that. Now, and Kopitas said it today, he'd be lying if, you know, the whole contract thing hasn't been weighing on his mind. Um, you know, I thought for sure it went down by now. I thought for sure him and Sam Gross would be signed by now. I think Kopitar, if I had to bet on one of them getting a deal done by January 1st, I'd say it's Kopitar. But at the same time, it's like, you know, annual value and years are holding this thing up. And it's like, well, what now? And, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate because, you know, the Kings, I think, have a legitimate shot at the Cup this year. You know, and there's going to be a lot of tough decisions to make this offseason, not just with Kopitar, but, you know, Milan Lucic and, you know, other stuff. You know, they've given up a lot of good players, a lot of assets for these guys, and now it's like, oh, yeah, well, um, you know, what, what do we do? Uh, Jeff Carter's really been, you know, kind of keeping them, <laughs> keeping them uh, afloat with his offensive contributions. But bottom line is, you know, Kopitar's not playing up to the level he's capable of. Um, you know, Marion Gabbert's been non-existent all season. Milan Lucic just had his moments. Um, but, you know, I just think, again, uh, maybe I'm just teaching a little optimist here, but I think a deal does get done. It's just, you know, kind of embarrassing it's taken this long. It's dragged on, you know, so long into the season. And I think it's affected the Kings, um, you know, play, you know, through the, through the, the quarter mark of the season. Um, but, you know, we'll see it, you know, if, this is what holds them back from getting it done when it matters most. But right now, they're in first place in the Pacific Division. Um, you know, they're looking pretty damn good. San Jose is charging, but they're a better team than San Jose. I think we can all agree on that. And, uh, you know, it sounds super good. The sooner they get a deal done, the better. Because, um, you know, you want Kopitar to have a, a clear and, uh, and, you know, mind clutter free of distractions to uh to do his thing on the ice and you know at the same time you also can't fault him for having that on his mind you know he's trying to get a deal done that'll take care of him and his family for a long time and you know possibly possibly be worth you know 60 70 80 million dollars you know you, you've really got to keep that in mind before he crits off too hard but anyway that's all it's sort of the power play with cj stay tuned for episode to the season and beyond later guys